Hello everyone, I am Dr. V. Mohan, Chief Diabetologist and Chairman at Dr. Mohan's Diabetes Specialty Center. And I'm going to do a series of videos talking about liver disease in relation to metabolic syndrome and diabetes, because this is emerging as a very important subspecialty of diabetes, endocrinology, and it's a field where actually the gastroenterologists come together and the diabetologists come together. In the first of these videos, I'll be talking about the metabolic syndrome and chronic liver disease. Now, what is metabolic syndrome? The term metabolic syndrome was first proposed by Gerald Reven many years ago when he spoke about this during the American Diabetic Association Banting Lecture uh, several decades ago. Now, what Dr. Reven said was that certain metabolic abnormalities tend to cluster. For example, diabetes or diabetes or high blood sugar, you can put it that way, high blood pressure leading to hypertension, dyslipidemia, insulin resistance and obesity, particularly visceral obesity. So what he said was that these five components of metabolic and cardio metabolic abnormalities are not individual separate identities, but they can intermingle with each other. And if you have two or more of these components, then we should classify it as metabolic syndrome. It was also called as the insulin resistance syndrome. And some people used to call it as the Reven syndrome or the syndrome X or the cardio metabolic syndrome. It had many names, but the same, the name metabolic syndrome seems to be the most popular and that seems to have stayed. Now, why should you talk about metabolic syndrome at all when you've got diabetes, hypertension and so on, on as different entities? The philosophy behind this, as Dr. Even said, is that the, the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. That means if you take all these together and if you add up the individual parts, it is more than that. More for what purpose? For producing cardio metabolic disease. So we all knew that metabolic syndrome, because that it's not very difficult to know that if you have diabetes, hypertension, obesity, you are more at heart, at risk for heart disease. But what has now emerged is that liver disease, especially fatty liver disease and chronic liver disease is probably part of the metabolic syndrome. And that is what has emerged very strongly. In fact, uh, there's a bi-directional relationship. For example, metabolic syndrome can lead to NAFLD or non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and non-alcoholic fatty liver disease can be not only part of metabolic syndrome, but it can also lead to metabolic syndrome. In fact, if we take diabetes itself, diabetes associated with fatty liver and fatty liver associated with diabetes. So these are called as bi-directional relationship. Let's talk about fatty liver in a little bit more detail. When you have excess adiposity, this adiposity or excess fat in the body, this fat gets deposited in the liver very easily. And that is what is called as fatty liver. Of course, fatty liver can come due to many causes. Medicines can produce it. So it's called drug-induced fatty liver and many medicines can produce it. Alcohol is a common cause of fatty liver. So those who drink, if you look at their liver, you'll find there's a lot of fat in it. But all these have been surpassed by a much more common cause of fatty liver, and that's called as the non-alcoholic fatty liver. In NAFLD or non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, by definition, alcoholism is ruled out, okay? And you still have the fatty liver. Now, why are we so much worried about this fatty liver? Because fatty liver can start with just a little bit of fat, we call it as grade one fatty liver, then you can go on to the next stage and the next stage. And then you have stage two, stage three of NAFLD. Now, up to that stage, it is only fat in the liver and we call it as steatosis. The next stage, that fat does not remain inert, but it starts producing chronic inflammation. Now, that is called as steatohepatitis because now inflammation has come. So in that stage, we don't call it as NAFLD anymore. 
we call it as non-alcoholic steatohepatitis or NASH for short. So NAFLD has now progressed to the stage of NASH. Once it goes to stage of NASH, it's a little bit more difficult to reverse. But the problem is that about 25 to 30% of people then go on to the next stage from NASH to cirrhosis of the liver, where severe fibrosis sets in, shrinkage of the liver occurs, cirrhosis sets in. And at that stage, as you know, once cirrhosis, chronic cirrhosis sets in, it is irreversible. And does it stop there? No, it doesn't even stop there. Unfortunately, about 25% of those who have the cirrhosis then go on to develop hepatocellular carcinoma or carcinoma of the liver. So you can see what started off as a very innocuous condition, just fatty liver, then becoming steatohepatitis or NASH, then going on to cirrhosis, and then going on to the last stage of hepatocellular carcinoma. Now, while that route is very well established, we don't know who will develop. And that's the problem. A lot of research is still going on to find out who are those who develop from one stage to the other to the other. But we do know that obesity remains and insulin resistance remains one of the most important predisposing factors. And metabolic syndrome is the one which drives this. So if you have metabolic syndrome, diabetes, hypertension, obesity, central obesity, insulin resistance, they are the ones who tend to progress along with this. How is the mechanism behind this? Uh, how does it develop and how does it progress? It is believed to be due to various inflammatory markers which increase when you have central obesity. So you have leptin, TNF1-alpha, IL-6, all these are increased in people with metabolic syndrome and the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So what can you do to prevent this? By controlling each of those factors, of course, if you control your glucose, your diabetes, hypertension is well controlled. And most importantly, if the obesity is controlled or reversed, if you lose weight, fatty liver can actually come back to normal. So we have seen patients who have lost weight, but you need to lose quite a significant amount of weight, say five, 10 kilos or more. If you're able to lose, then you can reverse the NAFLD and actually bring it back to normal. We see this after bariatric surgery. Today, there are medicines which are shown, anti-diabetic drugs, which have been shown to reverse the NAFLD. But the healthiest thing to do is lifestyle. So in the subsequent videos, we'll talk about treatment of this in greater detail. But here I want to tell you that metabolic syndrome is very much associated with chronic liver disease, with non-alcoholic uh, fatty liver disease, and also with NASH or steatohepatitis leading on to the risk of cirrhosis and eventually even to, uh, to hepatocellular carcinoma. The other risk completely independent of the liver route is through NAFLD because of the chronic inflammation, because of the obesity, because of the liver involvement and so on, actually increasing your risk of cardiovascular disease. So if you look at all people with chronic liver disease who also have this metabolic syndrome, they are more prone to heart attacks, strokes, and to get the cardiovascular end points. So it's very, very important for us to be aware of metabolic syndrome, chronic liver disease, and it's all in our lifestyle. If from a very young age, we are able to reduce weight if you're overweight or to prevent obesity, then the NAFLD as well as the metabolic syndrome are eminently reversible. And with that, you may also be able to prevent diabetes, hypertension, and even heart disease. And this is something which is becoming very prevalent even in youngsters, even in children. Today, we have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and metabolic syndrome. So all of you must take enough steps to see that you know about metabolic syndrome and you prevent non-alcoholic fatty liver disease and chronic liver disease. Thank you.